question eight. So in this question, it specified uh, one term, uh, which is the the chemical shift around seven point two. Means uh, this one, the singlet here, uh, is represent the proton in the benzene ring. So this is the statement. Means whenever you see a singlet uh, at uh, seven point something, so this is the protons in benzene ring. Means all this proton, all this proton, right? Okay. Now we have a uh, five structure, five isomeric ketones. PQRST. The structural formula is given. And for the part A, identify all the chiral carbons atom on the structure above. Mm, label the chiral carbon with asterisk. Okay, this one, uh, you if you look carefully, if you check, only T will give one chiral carbon. So only T is has one chiral carbon, so this one. Because this carbon is bonded to one, two, three, four groups. So therefore, this is a chiral carbon. This is what you learn in AS, you should know. For the part B, proton NMR of one of the isomer, one of that PQRST, uh, is shown in figure 8.1. Identify which of the compound PQRST give this spectrum. Draw the display formula of the compound you have identified uh, and uh, identify the protons responsible for the peaks at uh, 3.7, 2.5 and uh, 1 ppm. Okay, so let's look at this uh, spectrum. Uh, actually, from here, there is a very uh, obvious hints. Whenever you see a uh, triplets and quartet, is telling you the structure most likely is has the ethyl groups. Ethyl groups, the CH three CH two, because the ethyl group will form these two uh, signals. Means that these two splitting. So means. This one, let's say this proton will couple with these two from the triplets, okay, which is this one. And these two protons will couple with these three to form the quartet. So means whenever you see triplets quartet, means uh, there will be an ethyl group. If you know this, then uh, for the compound, uh, it's uh, very, very easy to, to identify. So it's R, because only R is has the uh, ethyl group. So most likely R, it will produce uh, this NMR spectrum, right? So therefore, you just need to draw this structure R display formula uh, in this part. Okay, so let's uh, look at the, the NMR spectrum. Okay, so one by one. Okay, again, uh, this is R, isomer R. This one, as one group, will couple with these two proton, one plus two. So this proton will form triplets. So means these protons will form these triplets. And for this proton, now is as one coupled with this three, so plus three, so it will form quartet. So quartet will be here. Uh, this one, this quartet. So this proton will produce the quartet, and this quartet is around two to three because uh, this CH two is next to carbonyl, so the chemical shift is around two to three. And Now, this is the proton, the CH2. This CH2, uh, it's uh, a singlet. Singlet around 3 to 4 here, because it's next to benzene ring. 
So this is this singlet okay, is produced by these two CH2. Uh, it's no splitting because uh, no uh, protons on adjacent carbon. That's why no splitting uh, and just singlet. And this one, it will just give a singlet uh, at uh, 7.2 ppm here. Right, so it's already told you earlier, this one, right. So that's why uh, you just need to, uh, you get this uh, structure, okay, which produce the, the, this NMR, right. Okay, so uh, I hope you understand, right. So the, the structure with the NMR. Part two, name the splitting pattern of the peak at uh, 3.7. Uh, 3.7 again is a singlet here, right? So uh, why there is no uh, splitting like uh, triplets quartet? It's just a singlet because uh, if you look carefully, uh, this one on the adjacent carbon here, here, it has no protons to couple with. Means uh, this one it will always a singlet, right? So because uh, the neighboring carbon has no hydrogen, so no splitting. No spin spin coupling, that's why no splitting. Part C choose from the this uh, PQRST to identify the two compounds that uh, each have a doublet uh, in the proton NMR. Uh, so it's P and T. Uh, so why is P and T? Uh, so from here you can uh, identify that easily. Uh, so this one is the let's say now we try to look at this six proton this six proton as one group so plus one means because it's coupled with this proton so it's plus one so this proton if you produce a tablet you produce a tablet and for the T this proton this CH3 also will couple with this proton so it's one plus this one so also this one it will form a doublet so that's why p and t will produce a doublet p okay in this proton animal and part two the compound with only three peaks means three signals in the protons animal uh, three signals means we have to find uh, P and T, which one is has the three proton chemical environment? That's the answer. For the P, we know that this is one proton environment. This is another one. This is another one. So for P, it has three proton environment. So it will form these three signals. For the T, it has one, two, three, four different proton chemical environment. So it will form four signals. That's why answer is P. Part D, suggest a suitable solvent that should be used for obtaining the spectrum shown in figure 8.1. Uh, the solvent used uh, for the proton NMR, we cannot use CHCl3 because the H here will produce signal. That's why we use the deuterated solvent means uh, we use CDCl3 instead of CHCl3. So this we call deuterated solvent. So just put this one. Part E, the proton NMR spectrum of the T, uh, is this one again, T, uh? okay, this one, is compared in the presence of D2O and absent of D2O with and without D2O is there any effects so we need to see whether this T this compound T is has OH group or NH group or not if there is OH group NH group when we use D2O the D will exchange with the H to form OD and ND so means the OH and NH peak will disappear uh, with the presence of D2O. Because in T, it has no OH and NH bond, so therefore no proton exchange. So means no change. 
So no difference as there is no proton exchange with the D. Uh, this is how you answer. Part F. Complete table 8.1 gives the number of peaks in the carbon-13 NMR for these four compounds. So this one, uh, just follow the numbers. Okay. Um, for the first compound, okay, let's, let's uh, um, count that. Okay, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. These two carbon, they are equivalent, so counted as 1. Okay, 5, this one also equivalent, this one 6. So therefore, it will produce 6 signals. Or in this question, they say uh, 6, six uh, peaks. Okay, for this compound, this one, okay, let's count. This one as 1, okay, they are equivalent, uh, this carbon and this carbon. So 1 signal, 2, 3, 4. So it just will produce 4 peaks or 4 signals. For this compound, okay, so we have to look at the, uh, which one is equivalent. So we start from here, this one, 1. Two. Okay, these two they are equivalents because it's symmetric. So this is three, four, five. So if you give five peaks or five signals. For the last compound here, okay, this one is as one because they are equivalent. This one is another one, right? So it's uh, and this is another one. And these four carbon they are equivalents. So, means the last compound, even though so many carbons, it will just produce three signals. So, we just put three here. Okay, that's all. Thank you.